Then Oil and Gas Limited commissioned a new ultra modern facilities in Port Harcourt. The CEO speaks on the projects and its importance. This is Inside Business Africa, Africa's business news and information leader. Hello and thanks for joining us. My name is Kenneth Odushola Stevenson and this is Inside Business Africa, Africa's business news and information leader. Indeed, the cherry news coming out of the United States and indeed Nigeria is that the, the visit the recent visit by the President Muhammad Buhari to the United States is currently yielding results, especially in relation to investment drives and many more. The, the visit also provided the American investors to speak with the President on areas of investment in Nigeria, including agriculture and many other sectors, education and more. And it is again this background that we are continuing with our special report on, on agricultural sector today, later on on the program. But we will also be talking about other sectors, as you may have heard on the highlight. But we we'll take a look at all that when we come back right after this commercial break. Well, the journey started uh, back in 2002 when we uh, visited the Shaw Technology Conference in Houston for the very first time, like most um, new entrants to the industry tend to do. Um, the idea was to understand the players, the services, and to identify what we could actually bring to Nigeria. Uh, we stumbled over something called glass fiber reinforced epoxy pipes, GRE for short, um, which we'd never seen before. Uh, initially, we thought that um, there wouldn't be much prospect for these pipes in Nigeria. But upon further um, digging, we realized that there was a huge potential for these pipes to provide an alternative to the conventional carbon steel for certain applications. Um, so we decided to take a closer look uh, we realized that these pipes were corrosion free mm -hmm. and uh, up to that time I didn't even realize there was anything um, that was corrosion free but these pipes were corrosion free, they were lightweight meaning installation would be easy um, installation techniques were very simple and application areas were quite numerous um, so we decided to, to take a look like I said uh, but then we realized that um, at that time uh, the few uh, organizations like LNG facilities and one or two platforms using these pipes um, are really uh, using expatriates to do the job. And for those projects, uh, there wasn't much by way of in-country capacity. Uh, Nigerians were largely confined to very small installation scope. And post-project completion, the team was dissolved. Uh, needless to say, uh, capital was not retained in country, meaning that the foreign companies were not really investing yeah. in the country. And um, we thought we could make a difference. And that's exactly how the journey started. Well, uh, like, you know, like I said, um, it's taken us about a decade. Um, it's like when, you, when you're building a, a, a mansion, you start with the foundation and you put the building blocks bit by bit and when everything is standing you know it's very difficult to see certain components mm. uh, the most important components are usually hidden 
um, when, when the building is standing. And that's the way I, I see this project that we're describing this, this afternoon. Um, we had to effectively build from bottom up. Uh, if you have an environment where uh, human resources and expertise in that area is not very common or readily available, then it was important that we built and we started by um, giving the manufacturer, NOV Fiberglass Systems, uh, a long-term plan that started with the sale um, of the pipes in the first place and then we moved into the installation, maintenance, commissioning, um, training um, to get our people certified as trainers such that we don't have to send engineers abroad to get certified anymore. Then the next phase was spooling. Um, spooling then refers to prefabrication, uh, which hitherto had been done abroad. So you do all the spooling abroad, you bring the pipes into the country for installation. Um, but in order to be able to uh, carry out spooling effectively, the challenge was that it's not just about putting a facility in place. It is about having the right people with the right skills and expertise to be able to carry it out before you even take the step. Uh, to, to build the facility. And that's precisely what we did. We went around, we, we um, observed other uh, organizations in Europe, in North America, um, who were spooling, for many, who have been spooling for many, many years. And we realized that the trick was actually not in the building alone or in the equipment alone. Uh, it is in quality equipment, yes, but more importantly, it is in the intellectual uh, property, the ability of the engineers to be able to deliver uh, quality work. And we needed to make sure that we did that. And um, as an indigenous company and as a company that's very, very passionate about Nigerian content issues, um, it was important to us that uh, we made sure that we um, saw it as a marathon and not a sprint. Uh, we took our time, we trained our people, we certified them, we acquired, brought in our equipment, uh, we installed, we tested. Um, and the rest is history. Uh, and, and now, what you're finding is that um, we are getting called and we're actually being referred to other clients by the manufacturer who's got uh, who's confident in our ability to send our people um, outside the shores of Nigeria to actually do um, GRE work. NOV fiberglass systems. Uh, these are, uh, NOV is the largest composite pipe manufacturer, GRE pipe manufacturer in the world. Uh, household name in the industry. Well, the thing is, uh, you know, we, we started, when we started on the journey, um, fabricating in country was part of our plan, with manufacturing actually being the last jigsaw, or the last part of the jigsaw. Um, so for us, uh, uh, the last 12 months has seen us fabricating uh, quite a lot of spools in country on projects like um, Total's Off On Two, um, which we did one phase, one scope with Niger Dock, another scope with Ponticelli. Projects like the um, Chevron's domestic supply obligation, which we did via Hyundai Heavy Industries, and other projects that we've lined up, including the Gina Deep Offshore project, as well as the upcoming Bonga FPSO. I mean, these are, it's, it's, it's integral to our own strategy. Um, we want to grow, we want to continue to evolve, we want to continue to send, set, set the, the, the pace. Um, and um, if you track, go back 10 years, when we set ourselves the vision of being the reference point for true local content development in the country and uh, in our industry, the idea was that you know, we, 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 we had to project several years ahead. Um, it didn't matter who believed in the vision at the time because we believed in it. And um, same thing, now we are not where we want to be. We are on the way to where we want to be. And so the next phase for us is we're going to see ourselves taking on much more complex projects, uh, much more um, chunky projects, and ultimately um, using Nigeria and Nigerians uh, as a hub for other West African projects. Uh, many years ago, we used to send, uh, particularly and specifically for GRE work, we used to send our staff abroad, as you have to, because um, the facilities were there, the trainers were there. After a, a little while, um, the trainers came into the country to train our people. After a while, we went for the trainer certification. As I said earlier, we are now at a point where every single staff, every single engineer for fiberglass purposes is actually trained in country 
by our people, Nigerians, yes. and not necessarily uh, taking anybody abroad anymore. The, the, the good news there is that the manufacturer has utmost confidence, not only in our ability to install and spool and commission GRE lines, but also in our ability to be able to, to train and certify our people. And that's a big milestone for us. Well, I'm afraid that's about all we have time for on Inside Business Africa for today. But I want to remind the construction industry family that the annual, the, the biannual Nigeria's Construction Industry Hall of Fame will be holding on September the 25th in Lagos. Nomination is currently in place. And if you know an engineer or architects and estate surveyors and valuers, builders, and also many more town planners that are putting over 20 years into this industry in Nigeria and also have been able to achieve so much in terms of project delivery and contribution in terms of human capital and more. You can send nominations to Inside Business Africa or also see the magazine with the address on our screen and also the email address. Also, we would like to implore you to join Inside Business Africa on Facebook, on Twitter and also on the YouTube where you can actually view today's edition of the program and watch out for a very special coming up on a built environment television on this program it's been kenneth odushola stevenson presenting inside business africa thank you again for watching see you next week mm -hmm.